Welcome back, everyone. Today we are finally going to talk about my template. Uh, it's one of the most requested things, so here it goes. So first of all, why do we need templates? Well, it's all about speed and setting yourself up for success. So if you are writing for a movie or a TV show, you don't have time to start from scratch every, for every single cue. That's just madness. Um, you're going to have to have some kind of template in place that you can work off of instead of wasting time loading instruments, routing instruments, EQing everything from scratch every single time, setting up reverb from scratch every single time. There's just simply no time to do that. And then it's also about cohesion, of course. You want everything in one movie or one TV show to sound like it came out of the same system. So you want to avoid, um, you know, starting from scratch for every single cue because inevitably it's going to sound very different every single time. And that's not really the goal. So the most common way to go about this is to set up a static template that st stays the same. A static orchestral template, for example, if you write orchestral music like me. And then you customize it for each project. But your most used instruments and everything should already be in there so that you have a starting point. And uh, the way I do it is I have a orchestral template. So the template I always work off of. And then I will customize it when I write the themes and everything. I will, you know, add instruments I need or specific things that I want. And then I will save it as a project template with that project name on it. There are some people who have really large templates, you know, the largest I've seen I think was 1700 tracks or something. I used to have a large template as well. Um, I've downsized quite a bit over the years because if I'm not using something for an entire year or two entire years, then it clearly has no place in my template. Um, I'd rather, you know, I think my template is roughly 700 tracks, maybe 800. So it's, it's large, but not massively large, uh, because I don't, I don't think that's very workable. It just gets cluttered and everything. And I just really want the stuff in my template that I really, really use all the time. So I don't actually have all of my libraries loaded. I have those libraries loaded that I actually end up using and the rest sits on a hard drive and if I need it I can load it but um, most of the time I don't. And templates are very common amongst team members. Mixers have templates as well and they also make project specific templates every single time. Uh, recording engineers have templates, uh, orchestrators have templates in Sibelius, Finale, Odorico. And understand that um, templates are a work in progress. There is no one master template or anything. My template changes every single time I'm done with a project. I've noticed things that bother me or I've noticed things that um, can be improved or I notice certain libraries that I just haven't used in a long time and clearly I'm not using them anymore or I've noticed other libraries that I'm using now that I probably should put in my template or maybe I've adjusted some EQs or you know whatever it is but after every project I take at least a whole day and I readjust my template and there's no right or wrong whatever works for you. There are as many templates as there are composers. Now this video, as you may have seen from the title, is about VE Pro, Vienna Ensemble Pro, which is very, very commonly used uh, amongst professional composers. Um, it's basically a software that hosts samples. Um, it's not a DAW, so it does not have audio playback capabilities. It doesn't have an audio engine itself, so you can't actually play audio out of it. It has to be connected to a digital audio workstation. A common problem that I've already talked about in one of the Q&As is if you don't connect VE Pro to a DAW, the scripts of the libraries actually don't get read. The audio engine doesn't get started. And so you get all kinds of garbled interfaces and you can't really do anything. You can't click on anything. So it always has to be connected to a DAW in order to work. 
Now you can use VE Pro on one computer or on two computers. Um, if you remember my hardware video, you know that I'm using two computers just because I still had those, um, at least the second one. Um, so I have one computer that is running Vienna Ensemble Pro and that is hosting all of my samples. And then my other computer is running the DAW and it's running the audio plugins and it's the one that I use to write. But you can also use Vienna Ensemble Pro on just one machine. Um, there are plenty of great computers these days that can run everything from one system. So it's not necessary anymore that you have to have two computers. Uh, you can run Vienna Ensemble Pro just in the background, have it open, have it host all the samples, and then run your DAW at the same time. So um, it also works on one system. Now, what's the advantage of using Vienna Ensemble Pro? Because obviously you could also technically just load all the samples into your DAW, right? Um, well, it saves resources, first of all, to use Vienna Ensemble Pro. You have um, faster load times of your sessions. You have lower save times. Um, if you host everything in your DAW, then it will take forever to save the session. With Vienna Ensemble Pro, it just takes a couple seconds. Um, and your DAW session file is going to be much lower because all that information is not stored in the DAW file anymore. So instead of being hundreds of megabytes, it's now, you know, really, really tiny. And so the advantage is that the samples just sit in Vienna Ensemble Pro while you can switch between DAW sessions, but the samples don't get reloaded. So the samples just stay there and you can switch between cues. It's super handy when you have a movie or a TV show and you have to quickly switch between, you know, 50 or 60 cues. Um, then it's just super handy if you don't have to reload samples every single time you start a session. Uh, because that would take forever and it's absolutely annoying and it would just slow down the entire workflow. You know, imagine doing something like MIDI prep for your orchestrator or imagine doing quick revisions or imagine doing uh, quick cue conforms because you got a new cut or imagine printing stems. It would just take forever because it would take 15 minutes or something to just load your Cubase or Logic session, which is obviously not the point. So with Vienna Ensemble Pro, it just takes, you know, less than a minute to load the session because you're not loading the samples. Okay, so let's try and go through this. So the first thing you do with Vienna Ensemble Pro when you set up your template is you would open a new meta frame. This is just what's called a meta frame. And you can see that within that I have five different instances of Vienna Ensemble Pro for the different um, instrument groups. And um, down here you can load contact or play or any other player really or synth, whatever you need, you can load down here if it's installed. And in order to do anything, as I mentioned, you're going to have to open Vienna Ensemble Pro inside your DAW as well. There's a standalone version, which is this one, and then there's a plugin version which you can load inside Logic or Cubase or DP or Pro Tools if you want. Uh, any DAW can open this. It's standard audio plugin format. And then you connect it to the MetaFrame that you want to load the samples into. Um, if you're using a second computer, make sure that both computers are connected via Ethernet to the same network so they can communicate with one another. If it's on the same machine, it showed it should show up automatically, um, but also your other computer should show up automatically if it's on the same um, internet, pretty much. Then you can set up your VE Pro buffer size to whatever works for you. I have it pretty high and I never notice any, any issues with it. And then you can basically load your instruments however you like. Um, so as I mentioned, I have five instances here um, and then I load the individual patches by library. So if you go into the woodwinds here, you see that the first one right there by library, then this one, this one, and so forth. Uh, and the same for the brass, for the strings, for the um, percussion, and for the um, 
choir. You can also load them by articulation or by instrument group. You can do whatever you like. Um, I like it by library, but um, this is by no means the only way to do it. Then um, once you have all the patches loaded that you want loaded, um, I set up the patches themselves, meaning I make changes however I want the changes to be. So um, I pick the mic positions I want. I generally turn off the reverb because the contact reverb is fine, but obviously we're going to use much better reverb in the DAW, so I turn that off here. I also often turn off other effects that are enabled here because, you know, we're going to be doing EQing and all this other stuff later. Um, I fix any envelopes, uh, like releases. I have a whole video on um, how to clean up releases. Uh, so if I notice that one library just has incredibly long releases compared to others, then I shorten those um, to make them blend better. But also personally, I like a slightly drier sound, so it suits me. Um, I fix bad samples if I know a patch has bad samples, but usually that's something I do as I go and then I just resave the patch. Um, I add uh, CCs. I like to use a lot of CC11, um, but a lot of libraries don't come with CC11 by default, so I go into the back end and I add a modulator, CC11, um, if you want. You don't have to do that. It's set them up however you want them set up. I decide if I want to use key switches or if I want to do velocity mapping or expression maps or, you know, whatever. If there are multi-articulation patches and I don't need certain articulations, I'm just going to, you know, deactivate them. Um, you can add extra panning if you want. It really doesn't matter. Whatever you feel something needs, you're just going to set up in the patch. The easiest way to figure this out is by taking the libraries that come closest to how you want your stuff to sound. And then you just adjust everything else to kind of blend with that sound. So once you've done that, um, we got to take care of the routing. Um, there's a batch function in contact, so you just go into every contact instance and go here. And this will assign um, an output, an individual output to every single patch. Now, you can leave it that way if you really want every patch to have its separate output. I usually bundle everything up. So if you look at my woodwinds, output one and two is always assigned to all the flutes. That's piccolo, regular flute, and uh, alto flute. And then output three and four is dedicated to oboe and English horn. And then um, five and six is dedicated to clarinets. You know, so I have certain groups bundled up. You don't have to do it that way. You can leave everything separated if you want though I feel like that would get a bit cluttered. But you can also, um, you know, if you want the piccolo separate from the regular flute and the alto flute, you can separate those out further. Like there's no, you don't have to have oboe and English horn in one group. I just do what suits me. I used to have it differently. I used to have um, everything split out and I thought it was a bit much. Then I downsized too much where I only had um, woodwinds high and woodwinds low. That wasn't enough, so this is where I ended up in the middle, basically. But um, yeah, do whatever you want. You can split it out, again, by articulation. You can split it out by library. Um, however you want control over these patches later on, you can split it out. Then another thing I do is I purge all the samples. Contact has a really great function called purge, which allows you to purge all the samples out of the RAM so they are no longer loaded. Because um, the way it works is that the little sample heads are loaded into the RAM so that um, Contact can quickly access all the samples in real time and read all those files. But you can purge that out of the RAM. It doesn't mean they're not taking up any RAM, they are. Um, so there's still quite a bit of RAM loaded, but much less than um, if you had, you know, all the mic positions and all the samples loaded. Um, I like this function because it allows you a lot of overhead, even when you have enough RAM in your machines, which I technically do. Um, 
but this way you can technically overload your meta frame. So you can technically load more patches that would fully load it, eat up more RAM than you have because you never use all of your samples. So as you are composing, it, it would be loading the samples that you're actually using into the RAM. So it would slowly start filling up but you never use all of the samples, all the articulations, all the mic positions, all the, um, all the velocities. It, it just doesn't happen. So you just save the meta frame while everything is purged. So next time you boot it up, everything is purged again. And it starts from scratch by just reloading the samples. During a project, I will resave the meta frame when some of the samples are already loaded so they don't have to get reloaded when I print stems later. So I do save them with some of the samples loaded for a project under the project name. But um, in my template meta frame, everything is purged by default. If you're on PC, um, you need to go into the settings and make an exemption for your sample hard drives because it has this um, real time um, safety feature where it scans all the files that you're loading in real time for viruses. Problem is when you're loading samples, that's a lot of files. So it just takes forever to load. So you can either turn off the real time scan or you can make exemptions for certain hard drives that just don't get scanned. And then remember to decouple your Vienna Ensemble Pro instances. So the data is saved inside Vienna Ensemble Pro and not inside your DAW session. If you don't decouple and you close your DAW session, all the loaded samples are going to disappear, all of the loaded contact instances. When you reload the session, they would reappear because you saved, um, accidentally saved the information inside your DAW. But that's not what we want. The whole purpose of Vienna Ensemble Pro is that you're not saving it in the DAW. So you have to decouple all the instances so that now if you close the DAW, all the samples stay just as they are. And then you open the next queue that is using the same template and it automatically connects to all the right um, instruments and all the routing is already done. Now, as I mentioned before, you can of course also host all of your samples inside your DAW and then disable the tracks. Some people do that, but you know it will slow down your workflow no matter what. In VE Pro, you can also use audio plugins for mixing. Um, some people like to do that. They already have some mixing set up in VE Pro on their um, outputs. I don't like to do that. I like to do all the mixing stuff inside um, my DAW, but it is an option. It's perfectly valid. And so once you've repeated this process for every instrument group, um, I've only showcased it now for the, for the woodwinds, but you do the same thing for the brass, strings, percussion, and um, choir, or whatever your groups are. You, you may have other instruments, maybe you have an extra ethnics instance, for example, or you know any synths or specialty instruments. So um, you can do whatever you want, depending on what kind of music you write. Um, so you re repeat this process and then you're pretty much done with your Vienna Ensemble Pro setup. One last thing to watch out for um, is that on both um, the standalone version and the plugin version of Vienna Ensemble Pro, you need to be on the same version number. So if you update one, you also need to update the other. It's happened to me that I updated Vienna Ensemble Pro on one machine, but not on the other machine and then the two cannot communicate anymore. So be sure that if you make an update, you have to make it on every machine that you want to communicate. I hope this was helpful. This was um, just a quick rundown of how I use Vienna Ensemble Pro. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll try to answer them, but also uh, feel free to reach out, of course, to the um, V Pro customer support because uh, they probably know more about this. And I'm pretty sure they also have some um, tutorial videos out there. So um, yeah, if you want to learn more about this, there are plenty of resources.